Are you looking for a Jira road mapping capability? Well, then today's video is just for you as we're going to be taking a look at Visor and I'm going to show you some pretty neat alternative to Jira's advanced roadmaps. And the best part is you don't have to double your bill. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. Let's jump into Visor and let's take a look. Here we are inside of Visor. Now, even though we do leave Jira native, everything that is inside of your Jira is going to come over to Visor and we're going to be able to have a really good road mapping capability, in my opinion. And I'm just going to walk you through this entire interface and I'm going to be comparing it to the Jira Advanced Roadmap. Now, I use the Jira Advanced Roadmaps a lot. So I know that realm really, really well. And so I'm very curious to make this video because this Visor product is a direct competitor to the advanced roadmap. The biggest benefit that you get as a customer of this product is that you don't have to double your bill. This really breaks my heart when folks that want road mapping capabilities, the only option that they have is if they want to stay within the world of Jura is to 2x their bill. And that is sometimes a really tough pill to swallow because sometimes that's the difference between paying like $5,000 and not paying $10,000. So it's a really, really big investment that you have to make. And so I'm gonna be showing you this alternative because really Visor is a really, really good alternative. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and I think you're really gonna like it. So let's jump into it. Let me show you how to start off in Visor and then we'll jump into the details. Back in Visor, everything revolves around a workbook. Now you can actually get started for free and there's a lot of stuff you can do for free. In fact, I am in a completely free version right now of Visor and I'm gonna show you that I can do pretty much everything I wanna do. You get to the point where you need to pay when you start really pulling in big projects with a lot of issues. Uh, the free version is gonna be capping you out at 250 issues, which for this demonstration is not a problem. And if you're a small team, that might not be a problem either. But if you're beyond 250 issues, then you're definitely gonna wanna look at the paid version but it is still very, very affordable, especially since you don't have to pay for every user to be inside of Visor, which at last name forces you. And so going externally here to Visor, you're just gonna buy the licenses that you need for the people that you need. So let's take a deeper look here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start a new workbook. As you can see, I already have an existing workbook with issues in it. And so I'm just gonna show you how to create this because it's super, super simple. So you're gonna click on file and you're gonna create a new workbook. Now, if this is the first time that you're setting this up, you're not gonna to have to click on file. And in fact, it's Visor's gonna prompt you to create your very first workbook. So everything else here should be pretty much the same, but I just needed to make a new one since I've already gotten started. Now, once you're here, you're gonna to wanna to include Jira data. Obviously, you don't have to use Jira because there's an option, but because this is the Jira channel, we're gonna be talking about Jira. So we can include Jira data and what you need to do is you just need to pick a project. And so just to reiterate, if you're on the free plan, you are going to be limited to 250 issues. But if you are paying for Visor, then just bring in whatever projects you need. So this is not just one project, but you can bring in every project that you want. Now, because I already have something nice going on over here, I'm going to bring in this PMI Jira Demo 1, which I already know what issues are in there. And so I'm gonna pick this project, but again, you can pick whatever you want. You can even do a custom JQL. And because you might not wanna bring everything in, you do have the ability to filter things out. So maybe you want to bring in specific issue types. Maybe you just wanna bring in your epics or your initiatives. Uh, maybe you just want specific statuses. And then if you don't wanna bring everything since the Roman Empire fell, which I love this humor here, very, very subtle, very, very nice, you can pick your created date here. So I'm just gonna bring everything in because I only have 37 issues and I'm gonna click on continue. This is gonna give you a quick preview. As you can see here, we're gonna be importing an initiative, a few stories and a few epics. And this is really, really nice because you're not limited to just epics, stories and subtasks. Other road mapping tools that I've used in the past they haven't really integrated with the Atlassian's new parent-child hierarchy, and so it does limit you to just the epics down. But what makes Pfizer really cool is that we can actually get all the issue types in your entire hierarchy. So I'm gonna be showing that we do indeed get these initiatives in here. So once you have this, you're just gonna click on continue, and we're gonna essentially figure out do we want it to look nested or do we wanna ignore nesting and just have a linear list? I like the nesting, so I'm gonna go with nesting, and we're gonna import our issues. This is just gonna tell us everything's doing it. It's successful, it's going, it's good. We're, got, we're done and we're gonna hit done. 
Now, you do get a video here so you can basically learn how to use it. We're good. I'm going to be showing you how to use it so you don't need to be watching this one. And then what custom fields do you want to add? We'll talk about that in a second. So for now, I'm just going to click continue. We don't want any of that. And as you can see here, Visor is now populating my roadmap with my data from Jira. Now, keep in mind that this is a bi-directional sync, but you do have the ability to make it one way. This does not have to go two ways. You get to pick which way it goes. So if you only want Jira to push into Visor, that is possible. So that, that way you can use Visor as like a strategic, don't contaminate Jira situation. But if you want to be both directions, if you want to make updates inside of Visor and have those changes pushed into Jira, that's also a possibility. So I'm going to be showing you the bi-directional because usually I want it both ways. So usually I want to make changes inside of my road mapping tool and then I want those changes to be reflected back over inside of Jira. All right, so now that we have everything loaded inside of Visor, what are we looking at? What is all of this? So first of all, we're gonna just kind of give you a little tour of what we got going on here. So where we are natively, this is the table view. And I really like the table view because it gives you the hierarchy, right? It gives you this nested hierarchy of being able to see my epics and my stories. And as I scroll down here, you will see that I have an issue with, with an initiative, and then that initiative has epics nested below it. And then those epics have the stories. And if there were subtasks, those would show up as well. But this view, if you're looking at it, it looks very familiar to like an Excel spreadsheet. And this is really good from an executive standpoint because you can see everything at a glance like you normally would in Jira with the added benefit that you also see the hierarchy. And most importantly, if you're more of a traditional project manager, one really, really cool thing that you don't get in Jira is this numbering over here on the far left. It is a very subtle added benefit because in Jira, when you create issues, they are all in numeric order. So if you create five issues at one time, and then like six months later, you're like, oh, I got another five issues that are gonna be related to this epic. Well, guess what? All the issues that have been created since then, they were incremented, right? So the numbering is like off by like 50. And so when you come and you look at your organized epic, you're going to see that epic is issue number one. And then if you made them in the right order, then you're going to have story is going to be number two, three, four, and five. But then when you go off and make more issues, those are going to get six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and so on. And so when you come back and like 50 later, your list is going to show one, two, three, four, five, 50, 51, 52. And I know that some people, uh, it's a little pet peeve and they like to see that sequential order. And so in this view here, we actually get to see not only the sequential order of it, but we get to see the children in sequential order. So as you can see here, I have an initiative that is level number nine, and then we'll have 9.1 is this epic. And then underneath that, we have 9.1.1, 9.1.2, 9.1.3, 9.1.4. So this is a really cool view from a, just a traditional project management, because even though the keys are out of order, as you can see here in this column, you do get to see that structure and that organization over here. And I know again, for traditional project managers, this is a chef's kiss right here. A couple of other things that I wanna highlight. So as you can see here, as we move over to the right, we have fields. Now these are the fields that are inside of Jira. And if you have any custom fields inside of Jira, those can come in as well. But what I like even more is that we have this ability to add a field over here on the right. And this add a field is a custom field, not to Jira, but to Visor itself. And this is a really powerful feature because sometimes you don't have the admin rights inside of Jira to create extra custom fields, or maybe your Jira admins just don't want to add extra fields that are important for you, but aren't really for the greater good of Jira. So with Visor, you have the ability to create your own custom fields so that you can control the context and the narrative that you're sharing with respect to your roadmap. So I think this is a really cool feature. So you have this drop down field so you can define, maybe you wanna track if something's on track or on, in risk or delayed. So these are all customizable to whatever you want. So if I go to drop down and I'm gonna call this like risk status, I'm gonna proceed to my drop down choices and I'm gonna say on track, delayed, suspended, big trouble. And you can pick whether it's a single choice or a multiple choice. I'm gonna go with single and I'm gonna click that add drop down. So this is just internal to Visor. There is no field inside of Jira, but what's really cool is that as we're going down here and we're statusing from here, I can click on this little drop down and I can pick, well, this is on track and then this one's delayed 
and then this one is suspended, right? So you get to now kind of control that narrative and add a little bit more context without having to alter your Jira world. So that's it for this table view. Again, really, really powerful view, very much like a traditional spreadsheet view, really good for executives. And it does feel and look a little bit more like a Jira issues list with the added benefit that we get the hierarchy. So let's move on over to the main event though, the Gantt view. I'm just gonna take the defaults here. But what makes this view powerful is that this is the more traditional road mapping view. So in our Gantt view, we get to still see our hierarchy. So over here on the left, I still have my initiative with my epics and my stories underneath that. So you can see I can expand it all. In fact, I can even move things up if I wanted to see it a little bit higher because this Lisa's initiative really is that important like that. But now that we have this, uh, on the left hand side, we're going to have fields, specifically due date and start date. But what you get as an added benefit in this view is that we now start to see dates. And so these dates are you're going to see every week here. So I can basically add dates to an epic. I can add dates to an initiative. I can add dates to a story. And so you're getting that added benefit of being able to really create your Gantt chart that isn't available for you in the standard version of Jira. Now this capability of being able to add dates to any issue type is built into Jira premium and enterprise, especially if you're using the advanced roadmap. But when we're looking at it from an advisor's perspective and specifically for anybody using free or standard versions of Jira, this is powerful because now we can add dates to everything in your Jira right now. Again, if you're on free or standard, you only get the dates on the epics. You can tweak the stories, but it's an extra step that you might not be familiar with. And so the frustration or the defaultness of it is no dates on the stories because they inherit their sprint. And so here you're going to be able to essentially add dates to everything. A couple of things that I want to mention in this Gantt view. Number one, milestones inside of Jira is not really a thing. Inside of Jira, you can use the fixed version as a milestone but it's not very obvious. It's not a very well-known capability and it's a little bit of a hack, but here you can actually create uh, milestones by simply taking any of these items. So I'm going to take this Epic. Let's just say that this Epic right here is going to be a milestone, right? And so over here on the right hand side, when I have my date, all I have to do is right click and display as a Gantt milestone. And when I do that, the end date is now that milestone. So now I can more traditionally make a roadmap the way you would be doing it in another like project management tool. And so you can define these milestones again, something you cannot even do and or even imagine doing inside of the Jira advanced roadmap. So this is really powerful. And then the other thing that I want to highlight is that Svisor today, they're working on an update so that you can link dependency. This is not something you can do right now, but very, very soon you're going to be able to link dependencies just the way you can inside of Jira advanced roadmap. There's one last thing that I want to show you here. That's really cool. So Jira is usually a very bland looking thing. It doesn't have any color. And even in the advanced roadmaps, we do have a little bit of color, but it's very limiting. I want to show you what visor does here with respect to coloring. So over here in the UI, we have a formatting option. We can click on that. And when we do this, we're going to be able to see the different items that we can select to determine our color coding. So I'm going to simply pick issue type, but any of these is going to work for you. And when you do that, it's going to ask you, Hey, what do you want to form this is? I'm going to do auto format, just let it figure it out for me. And then you can see that all the different issue types are not color coded here on my Gantt chart. So again, you can change the colors, do whatever you want, but this is a pretty cool feature so that your eyes can kind of focus on the thing that's most important. Moving along, we'd have the board view. Again, we're going to accept the defaults, but feel free to modify these to whatever you want. And now this is the more traditional board view. Now, what I like about this is that you can see your issues like you would inside of Jura without having to go back into Jira. So you can see this in a more traditional board view. And this is really neat that you can do this because in the Jira advanced roadmap, I find myself having to like switch back and forth. A lot of users are used to this view. A lot of users want more of the Gantt view. And so it's really nice that I can just switch here by just changing these tabs without having to go back into Jira because normally when I'm in the advanced roadmap and I do want to see this view, I have to go back into the project, back into the board and then look at it from that perspective. And I either have to have multiple tabs or I have to refine my way in the plan. And so it gets really, really annoying. So this is a pretty cool view that you just get to see all of this here without having to do so much jumping. And then finally, we have the timeline view. Accept the defaults. You feel free to configure this in whatever way you want. But what is cool about this one is we get to see a capacity plan here. And so this timeline view will show you all the different assignees 
and you'll see all the work that is assigned to them. And as you can see here, Alana has got a couple of stacked items. And so this is a really good view to see how much work any particular resource or any particular member in your team has. But it's not limited to just teams. You actually can change it so you can see like issue types, projects, risk status, statuses, right? So if you just want to see how many issues do we have, right? They're all kind of stacked here so you can see all the different things that are going on. Because if you have so much, right, if, if all your epics are just clustered and on top of each other with all the similar dates, then guess what? Your team's probably going to be worked a little too thin and not be able to finish all those commitments. So this is a really good view to just see what's going on and see if you're overwhelming your team or if you're not overwhelming your team enough. So really cool and powerful view. So let's move back to the Gantt view and let me show you a couple of cool things of what Visor can do because just converting the milestones and showing everything is cool. We actually have the real data, right? So I can open up any of these items and this is going to take me right back to Jira so I can do any changes here. Now let's assume that I did a change inside of Jira and let's just say that I put a date here and a due date of um, May 24th. This is automatically saved and inside of Jira. But when I come over here, you're going to notice the dates aren't the same. These dates are not the May dates that I just set. So what I need to do is I need to click the sync and import button. So if I click this button, I can either choose to do a sync, an import, or both a sync and import. And this is essentially going to do whether you just want the data to come in, or if you want to bring in new issues that may have been created while you were working on your roadmap, or if you just wanted to do both, right? And again, you can configure this so that it is either bi-directional or just in a single direction. Um, I'm going to keep the bi-directionalness of it because I think that that's very important. Um, and I'm just going to hit that sync button and it's just going to go and do its thing. Now, we don't always have the luxury of having everything done in Jira for us and be brought. So what's really cool about road mapping in general is that you're usually like in a strategic war zone type of situation where you're coming up with the plan. So if all the issues are in Jira, great. That's awesome. You've already done a lot of work up front, but most likely you're going to be in this roadmap view and you're going to be coming up with new work. You're going to be basically strategizing the new epics or the new stories or the new initiatives that you and your team want to handle. And it doesn't make sense for you to jump over to Jira to be able to track that. So you want to just be able to create them here. Let's assume that I want to add a story to this epic. So I'm going to go back into this table view because it's so much easier to do it from here. And I'm simply going to right click on the epic item here and I'm going to add a nested record. This is going to preserve that parent child relationship. And it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to look for an existing issue, which is not going to find anything because it hasn't been created, or I can just create a new one. So I'm going to call it int four. Then I'm going to click on create as a draft new issue. Click on that. And now I'm going to be prompted to fill out the required field. So if you're in the other views, you may not get this. So I highly recommend you do this from the table view as you're going to have these items. So I'm going to click on the project. I'm going to go look for my project and it's going to be down here in the PMI. And then uh, you have to pick the issue type. So I'm just going to make this one a story. And once you have that data, you'll basically fill out those required fields. And now if and when I'm ready to sync it with the Jira, I can click on that sync button and it's going to go and push it into Jira and that issue will not be made available inside of Jira. And then to wrap things up, the last thing I want to show you is that we have this capability called filter. So sometimes you have a lot of data and it can be very overwhelming and we can just simply click on filters here and maybe we want to see specific assignees. So if I just want to see Alana here, I can click on that and it's just going to show me Alana's work. And so this is a powerful view so that you can see the assignee, right? And it's not just going to show you the assignee, but it's going to show you the upstream, all those connections so that you see Alana's working on these specific stories, which is good. This is what she's assigned to, but then you're going to see the relationships to the rest of the work as appropriate. So that's pretty much it for this video. This is Visor's road mapping capabilities. And again, if you don't want to double your bill, then you definitely want some sort of a road mapping capability within Jira with your actual Jira data that just so well synced with Jira, then definitely give Visor a try. I think this is a powerful tool that is a, a lot more affordable than doubling your bill. And it's something that I think is going to scratch that itch if you've been looking for like a gap view or just something to show your entire hierarchy without again having to double that bill. Visor is definitely going to be there for you. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like, and most importantly, check out that link down below so you can get started with Visor today. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.